great. Good morning, everyone. We will start our event in just a couple of minutes. We'll wait for a couple more viewers to come. Where did Oliver go? Okay, great. I'm going to do this and then we all start talking. Just a moment. Okay. Caroline, are you back here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. Um, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Palomar Field Station. We are here banding birds today. Um, our special topic for today is bird birthdays. Um, so we will talk a little bit about why we are talking about bird birthdays today. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about aging birds as well. Um, in a little bit, we're also going to head into the library um, to look at some of our journals um, that we've been keeping here at the field station since we started in 1966. Um, and one of the fun things that we like to do, uh, especially with interns that come through, or anyone that comes through really, is um, looking back at the journal page for the, for the day that you were born. Um, and so we're going to ask some of you to give us your birthday so that we can uh, look into the journals uh, for what was happening here at the field station back on your birthday. Um, so one note, um, we do have a bird, so super exciting. Someone just went on a net run um, and brought back a bird. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, process the bird in just a minute, but uh, I first wanted to talk a little bit about COVID. You will notice that I am wearing a mask. The other people here, which you cannot see on camera yet, um, are the, in the crew of interns, um, and they will not be wearing masks. We will also all be kind of close to each other. So we are um, functioning as a family unit here at the field station, um, but with the, with the more recent uh, shelter-in-place restrictions, the minimal staff that come out here have just been taking some extra precautions, so you'll see me wearing a mask most of the time. You may see me take it off at some point. We're just trying to um, minimize the exposure for the people who are living here, but who do come and work here and are part of the uh, Palo family unit. Um, Okay, I think that we don't want to make this bird wait too long, so I'm going to go ahead and have um, Brandon and Sophie, I'm going to have you come on camera and just introduce yourself and then you guys can start um, processing the bird and writing down data and I will explain what is going on. Great. I'm Sophie, I'm a banding intern. I'm Brandon and I'm also a banding intern. Excellent, thank you guys. Um, okay, so you'll notice Brandon is uh, pulling the bird out of a bag. We have 20 nets set up around the field station here. Every half hour, one of the biologists goes out and checks the nets and um, collects any birds that are caught in the nets. We then put them in these bags to transport them back to the banding station where we take them out and we process them. Okay, excellent. Um, let's first ask if anyone and you can like bring it forward if you want to, Caroline. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone knows what type of bird this is. Yeah. 
good idea. Yeah, we have the lighting today in here. There we go. Okay. Any guesses yet on birds? Um, I will wait a moment to let some people guess and then we will tell you who this is. Um, you can go ahead and start processing Brandon. Okay, so one thing that you may notice with this bird is that it already has a band on it. So Brandon is reading out the band number to Sophie. And um, all of the birds that we catch, we put a, um, an aluminum band on them that has a nine digit number. And that nine digit number is then unique to that bird so that we can track it over its life if we catch it again. We got a guess for okay, the species. Um, Ren tit. Excellent. Yes, this is a Ren tit. Um, and so another thing that you'll notice about this bird, um, Brandon, you may want to show the color band. Yeah, cool. Um, so you'll see that this bird has some fancy colors on its legs. That is because Ren tits um, are one of our study species here, and so we use those color bands in order to um, identify individuals in the, um, in the field. Um, so we can see through our binoculars who this bird is. And this bird is uh, S slash R B M. That is, uh, so the silver band is on the left leg and then the right leg has a red, a blue, and a mauve or purple band. So, um, Brandon is going, you'll see him blowing on this bird a lot, and what he is doing is um, looking through the feathers to the skin of the bird um, to look at various characteristics on this bird. So he's looking for whether the bird is molting any feathers. He's also looking at whether the bird is carrying or storing any fat. Um, and he is looking at the overall um, condition of the feathers as well. And so another thing that he is doing um, and that he may have already done is try to age the bird. Mm -hmm. And so we use a couple of different um, techniques depending on the species of bird um, and the time of year to determine the age of the bird. Um, some of you may have been here for our uh, Facebook Live where we talked about aging birds. Um, at this time of year, it can be a little bit difficult to age birds because some of the uh, things that we typically use to age birds, such as skull development or juvenile plumage, so the, the plumage that the bird um, hatches with, um, those, those are uh, characteristics that are harder to tell at this time of year just because we have gone past the skull ossification date and the birds have uh, molted out of their juvenile plumage. So younger birds look a lot like adult birds for the most part. He's now um, measuring this bird's tarsus. So that's just one of the measurements that we take, especially on our study species. Um, and it's just a way of basically measuring size, kind of like measuring your height. And then you may want, yeah, want to do that. And this is how we weigh our birds. This is usually the last step that we do when we're processing a bird, um, is stick them in this weigh cup and weigh down. 13.5. To weigh them. Okay. One more with this bird? Uh, yeah, let's, let's just um, show the bird in photographer's grip one more time. And we may... We've got a question okay. from Lishka. Okay, great. What is a tarsus? Great question, Lishka. Um, so the tarsus is... The, um, the bone between the foot and the tibia. So it is um, basically where those color bands are. Those color bands are sitting on the tarsus of the bird. And so depending on the species of bird, you can have birds that have very long tarsus. Uh, hermit thrushes, Swainson's thrushes. Lots of thrushes have delicate and long tarsi. Is that how you say that? Um, and then you have birds like a kingfisher who basically does not have a tarsus at all. So this is our lovely little wren tit. Um, you cannot tell the difference between a male and a female wren tit in the hand, so this will be an unknown uh, sex bird. Uh, but did you say, Brandon, already what you aged this bird as? After hatch year. Okay, after hatch year. So that's a word that some of you may or may not know, and we will be talking about that. Basically, after hatch year means that this bird hatched 
previous to this calendar year. So he did not hatch in 2021. We will talk more about that in a moment. Um, okay, so I think that we're good on this bird. We can go ahead and uh, bring him back to the net. So with the rentits, they don't do a very good job of finding their way back to where we caught them. Um, so we walk them all the way back to the net that we caught them in. So Brandon is going to go ahead and bring that rentit. And Sophie is actually going to bring this bird back and she's going to check our nets once again for, um, to see if we have caught any more birds. Great. Bye. 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 <laughs> see you Bye. soon. Um, okay. I'll come back here. And we're going to talk about bird birthdays. So, bird birthdays, why is that our topic for today? Um, so the way that we age birds, you may talk, hear us talking about aging birds. We do not age birds very specifically. We don't say that a bird is, uh, we don't necessarily say that a bird is X number of months old or X number of years old. But we do, it is a very important piece of information that we collect on all the birds that we catch, trying to determine what their age is. So basically what we want to know is whether the bird is a young bird or an adult bird. And so um, knowing whether the bird hatched in, a, in the previous year, in this case in 2020, um, or if it hatched in a year uh, previous to 2020, um, is important information for us to track how reproductive success of certain species um, is going. And so if we are catching a lot of young birds, we can say something about the success of that breeding season. So that particular species may have done really well during that breeding season. If you're seeing mostly adult birds um, and not very many young birds, then it may be that they did not have a very successful breeding season. That's a very simplified version um, of, of the information, but that is one of the key pieces of information that we do like to have about um, all the birds that we catch. So when we talk about young bird versus old bird, um, we use the terms hatch year and after hatch year. So again, a hatch year bird is a bird who hatched in this calendar year. An after hatch year bird is a bird that, that hatched in a year previous to this current calendar year. A second year is a bird who hatched one year previous to the current calendar year. And then we also have after second year and after third year. We have a couple of others that you can sometimes um, age certain birds more specifically, such as woodpeckers. They have, um, you can sometimes see multiple generations of feathers in their wing. And then you can say, this is three years of feathers in this wing. So this bird is at least three years old. So birthday. So since we talk about aging birds within a calendar year, that means that on January 1st, all of the birds that we called hatch year in the previous year become a second year. All the birds that were an after hatch year in the previous year can be called an after second year because we use the calendar year and not the number of years that the bird was actually alive for. It's a very confusing system and it kind of, um, there are other systems for aging birds, but this is the most common one that um, banders use. Um, so that rented, we called it an after hatch year. We, so basically all that that tells us is that we know that that rented did not hatch in 2021. So it is not, what is the date? Is the six? It's, it is more than six days old and we know that for sure because it is full sized and has um, adult looking feathers. Um, so at this time of year, let's see, before January 1st, so in December, you often have birds that have an unknown age because um, it may look like an adult bird, 
But at that point, the hatchier birds, the ones that hatched in that year, they often have plumage characteristics that look a lot like the after hatchier bird or the adult birds at that time of year. So in those situations, we are unable to age those birds and they are called unknown age. Come January 1st, an unknown age bird can become an after hatchier bird because we know that it didn't hatch within the few, first few days or weeks of January. And so that changes um, as we get further into the year and as we start have the breeding season starts and we start seeing more young birds, then you're able to actually age birds a little bit more uh, precisely, we'll say. Um, okay. So that rent it, we don't know how old it was. It could have been hatched in 2020 or it could have been hatched in a previous year to that. We just know for sure that it was not hatched in 2021. So on January 1st, we celebrate birds' birthdays because that is when our aging system, all of our aging codes um, switch over. Yes, question. Question from Lishka. Okay, great. How does knowing age help conservation? Okay. So um, knowing the age of birds um, can help guide conservation. So that is um, similar to what I was talking about before, where, where it's good to know how many young birds and how many adult birds there are in a population. So we can um, see whether there was a good recruitment of young birds into the population. Um, birds have a very hard time in their first year of life. And so Often you start out with a lot of, of young birds, hatcher birds, and during their first winter, quite a few of them may not make it. So then later on in the season, it's good to know that you have, um, like right now, it's good for us to see a lot of second year birds because that means that they're, they're making it through the winter. Um, and so that can say something about the resources here in this location um, for supporting young birds here. Um, the other thing that it can tell us is that if you don't have very many young birds in a population, that may just, may, something may have happened that year on the breeding grounds for that certain species. Um, if you start seeing that year after year after year, you just normally, you know, you have whatever, 50% young birds and 50% old birds that you're, um, that you're catching in a certain population of birds. And then if you have for several years in a row, you're catching 75% adult birds and then 25% young birds, um, and maybe that percentage of young birds starts going down, you may, uh, th that may be saying something about the conditions of the ecosystem where the uh, birds that are breeding, what is happening to that ecosystem. And so that can help us um, determine certain areas that may need to uh, that may need to be conserved or potentially restored um, to help bird populations um, so that breeding success continues. Um, the other thing that is very interesting about knowing the age of birds, um, so with migration, um, a lot of, so right now we have birds, certain species of birds that are wintering here that bred further north. So we have hermit thrushes, Golden crown sparrows, um, fox sparrows, ruby crown kinglets. Most of those bred somewhere north of here. Um, we have geolocator information on some of those species. So hermit thrushes, um, golden crown sparrows, and fox sparrows, we actually were able to put GPS tags on them so we know where they breed. So a lot of those species breed up in Alaska. And then they migrate down for the winter and they're spending their winter here. And so, um, it is important for us to know also whether um, a species is doing better or worse in their breeding grounds versus their wintering grounds. So with that, um, it's also important to know where exactly their wintering and breeding grounds are. And so that's uh, the importance also of uh, the geolocator data that we are collecting to determine where our populations are spending all parts of the year. So the birds that breed here in the summer, where do they go in the winter? And the, breed, the birds who spend their winters here, where do they go during the breeding season? Age can be really helpful in just knowing about population demographics and what's happening where um, on 
in the phenology, the phenological cycle of the birth. Okay. Any other questions? Um, we have a question from Julie. What would be an ideal percentage of young versus old for a healthy population? That's a great question. It's actually one that as I was saying the words 50% young, 50% old, I was like, I actually have no idea what, what a typical um, ratio is of young versus old. And so you do have, with most bird species, and I think it, it must um, change quite a bit based on the species as well. Songbirds probably are all somewhat similar. There may be, um, you know, depending on whether a species is migratory or not, that may also adjust the ratio. You would ex expect, though, to have um, a lot of young birds to begin with, but that ratio would then um, dwindle as you go further into the winter. And so with the after hatch your birds, that's an important thing to, um, to note that our after hatch your birds, that means that they just, they hatched in some calendar year previous to this one. And so that bird could be 10 years old. And so you could have a bunch of 10 year olds, a bunch of nine year olds, a bunch of five year olds, a bunch of three year olds. Those are all called after hatch years or after second years at this time of year. Um, and then, so those are all like the adult birds versus the hatcher birds. And so you would expect to have more adult birds in a population, so I don't think it would be 50-50 because you would have more adult birds because they have a much long, uh, larger range of ages in, in that population. And so um, that also probably determines what the ratio is because some species of birds are longer lived than others. Um, that is a great question, and I do not know the answer. We could actually look that up in our um, in our data pretty easily. So we have been collecting information on birds here since 1966, um, and so we have a very big database of um, information on birds. And since age is one of the things that we collect on every bird that we catch, that would be relatively simple for us to um, determine in any given year what the ratio is between hatcher and after hatcher birds in a certain species. So we'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, do we want to go into the library now? Are there any more questions? No more questions. Okay. Could go until Sophie yes. radios in. Okay, so now we're going to go, oh yes, I was supposed to ask this and then I forgot to do that. If viewers could um, enter their birthday in, day and year, if possible, we can go ahead and look through our journals um, and see what was happening at Palmer on your birthday. <laughs> Disclaimer, sometimes it's not super exciting. Other times it's very exciting, so. Um, okay, so. Start, start giving us your birthdays. We're going to move into the library. Yes, I'm just gonna. Oh. Yeah. Ricky, should got we go it. back? Yeah, I'll talk about the library real quick. Now we're going to go back in and see a bird. We're catching birds this morning. That's really great. Um, we so during in January, especially January, February, March, we have pretty low capture rates. Um, and so this is great that you guys will get to see two birds. Um, okay. So this is the Palomarin Library. Um, this is where the interns who live here, this is kind of their living room. This is where um, they spend a lot of time after hours. This is also um, 
a meeting room where we have meetings. In non-COVID times, this is also a, a place where um, other Point Blue staff and sometimes our partners, so um, some of our partners with the park or with MMWD or one time they may come here to meet and talk in this space. Um, this uh, building used to be a school for the Church of the Golden Rule, um, and so it has been a space of learning since it began in the early 1900s. I don't actually know when this building was built. But now it's our library. We have lots of books, lots of um, journals, bird journals. A lot of field guides and stuff over there. You have a question in just a moment. And then all these red books here, these are our Palomar and Field Station daily journals. And so that's something that the interns still do um, on a daily basis. One of the jobs that the interns do is uh, write about what happened that day. So they write about the birds that they caught, the birds that they heard and saw around the field station, and then they also take information on weather and write a little bit about what happened that day at Palo. Okay, Question. Julie wants to know, did we take all of those books out during the fire? Yes, great question. Okay, so, um, so that's something that um, we are still in the process of doing. We started this actually last, maybe about a year ago, previous to the fire. We started going through, we can also maybe like walk them through the data room just to show them the amount of books and data that we have. Mm. And so we started um, going through all of our books and data and determining which ones were high priority for us to, um, to evacuate if we ever needed to. So this is a lot of data. This is called the data room. Um, I will talk about all the data that is out on the counter in just a moment. Um, so, with our data these days, um, all of the interns, they, um, they collect data daily, they enter it daily, and then they proof it, and at the end of the year, we scan everything, and so everything is, has a digital copy scanned and also is entered into our digital databases, and then we have paper copies. That is just our standard protocol now. Um, but back before we had computers and scanners, that was not our, our protocol. So all of these books that are out on the counters, these are all, this is all data that has not been scanned and may not have a digital copy otherwise. So it may not be, the information may not be in a database in our system. So the, everything that's out on the counter right now, those were all evacuated with us. These are high priority because if we lose these, we lose all of that information. It's nowhere else. So right now, we actually, the reason that they're out on the table is because we are going through and scanning everything so that we at least have scans of all of our information um, so that if something does happen, then we, um, we still have a copy of it. So um, with the journals, we do, we have scans of all of our journals. That was something, that was a priority um, in previous years, we made sure that all of the journals got scanned into our system, but we did bring all of the journals with us as well because they are they are still, you know, very special and um, one of a kind. So that was the journals and a lot of the data that is out right now. Those are the things that we brought with us, um, evacuated with us with the fire. So um, that was a great question. Okay, we're heading back into the band lab now. Okay. Hey, Sophie. Hi. <laughs> We've got this little bird here. Ruby Crown Kinglet. Cool. Okay. I'm going to get on the other side. Great. Have you done 
done anything with this Ruby Crime Team yet? Have you aged it? Uh-huh. I aged it second year. Awesome. So second year. That means that this is uh, the second calendar year of its life. So Sophie um, has determined that this bird was was hatched in 2020. So this is a young a young bird. He was called a hatch year back in December, and today he's called a second year. Um, and is this a male or a female? This is a female. Great. We'll show you how Sophie determined that this was a female. Um, so, the with a ruby crown kinglet, you may wonder why are they called ruby crown kinglet? Because this one does not have a ruby crown. Because it is lacking a ruby crown, um, that means that it is a female. So if it had a red red crown, then we could call this a male bird. And she determined the age of this bird. So um, again, uh, we talked about aging birds in a previous um, Facebook Live. And so one of the things that we do with we use with uh, with all birds is the shape of feathers. Ruby crown kinglets especially, we can use the shape of their primary coverts. Um, so the primary coverts are, these are their primaries, those are the wing, the main wing feathers. You have primaries and secondaries. And then these, lo this little attractive feathers here, those are the primary coverts and they are just covering the top of the primaries. Um, and so the, the primary coverts and also the ref retrices or the tail feathers, they'll be much more narrow and tapered on a young bird. So Sophie determined that these feathers were narrow and tapered um, and they would be broad and truncate on a, an adult bird. So narrow on a second year bird, truncate on an after second year bird. Great. I'm done taking data on it. Okay. Um, let's maybe, I know I'm making you like bring us everywhere, Caroline, but it's let's okay. watch her uh, release it. Okay, yeah. Let me shoot out there. This way. Thank you, Brandon. Okay. It's going to be real fast. Mm hmm. Or not, if it's checking. Sometimes we have to blow on their feathers. There it goes. Hmm. Cool. Shaking it off. <laughs> Great. Okay, so let's go back into the library and we can go through that. You guys are getting a, a full tour of um, how we're today. And we have some birthdays in our um, in our uh, comments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Need to adjust. Sophie, I believe we have a journal out already. I believe Sophie's birthday. She yeah. says that there's something exciting that happens on her birthday. So we're going to read that. And then if, if you could give me one of the birthdays, someone, um, I can start getting a journal ready for the next birthday. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did we already share that on Facebook? No, actually, that is great. I did talk a little bit about what the, about the information that we collect, but um, that would be great. Wait, where are you going? I was just gonna show, show the what the what a journal page looks like. Okay. So here is a journal page, and we have the weather that we take every day up here, and then um, it's changed a little bit over the years. But here we have like a description of the weather, and then a little bit of a um, description of the day, and then the birds that we caught in that day. And on my birthday, they caught a rose-breasted grosbeak, um, which is exciting because that is a vagrant. Um, and if you remember from our vagrant episode, a vagrant is a bird that is um, occurring out of its range. 
Um, and a rose breasted grosbeak is also a really beautiful bird. So that was exciting. Cool. Cool. We had a, a birthday November 17th, 1979. Is that? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's see. It's Lishka's. Lishka's birthday. Okay. This is a funny journal entry. It says, too much confusion around here. The journal was neglected for three days. No one can remember. I don't, I mean, it's kind of funny because the last, the previous three days, I guess they just had, um, birds written down, but they didn't actually have journals about what they had been doing those days. Um, it was a cloudy, somewhat rainy and drizzly in the morning, and then it cleared to a truly beautiful day. Hmm. Um, they had, they heard around the field station, they heard a pygmy nut hatch, red-breasted nut hatches, western bluebirds, Audubon warblers, and myrtle warblers. They banded um, eight birds, and they had four retests. They caught a bush tit, a berry thrush, a hermit thrush, a scrub jay, mm. and several rubies. Ruby trying to think of stuff. Great. Okay, next cool. birthday, all right in the bonnet. Uh, is that the 2016? Yeah, 2016, courtesy of Jennifer Jacobs um, for her kids. Um, so on this day, it seems that uh, Tom and Anna banded a palo and they just caught three birds on that day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a very wet day. Um, it was very rainy last night. Um, and Anne uh, was excited to process a fox, but that was very fat. Um, fat fox bear. Okay. Yeah. And actually, you and Maria ba uh, gritted on that Ooh. day. Nice. You saw a pair of red kids <laughs> preening each other on a branch. Hmm. Classic. <laughs> And then Wesley found a nest that's only 30% completed. Uh, you and Maria found a nest that had to be up in the Douglas fir. Nice. Hmm. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Some typical um, spring springtime uh, activities. So gritters, our nest searchers were out nest searching and then banders were coming. I remember that year, it was very wet. Hmm. We have another birthday. July 7th, uh, 1986, from Eddie, uh, sorry if I butchered your name, let's see here, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> weather started out cloudy, there's not much about birds today. What does that say? Rick Perkins, Rick Perkins, if you're out there, you stayed the night in that day. <laughs> Michael Schwartz went to visit Sandra. <laughs> I feel like back in the day, the um, the handwriting was not the best. <laughs> Sometimes with the older journals, I'm like, I can't see what is written here. I was wondering what this means, M A, like Massachusetts. L A and M A. Hmm. Yeah, there's all these acronyms that I'm not familiar. Sorry, Julie, we don't have 1958 for you. <laughs> we could we could do your birthday on a like not the not the year but a different um, Oh yeah. This past year. 9 12 Just random. What random year? <laughs> Earlier. As close as you can get to your birthday. <laughs> Which year is this? Cool. 
Seven years old. Okay. <laughs> There's a chance that they weren't taking journals every single day back then? I don't really know. I haven't looked much at the super old journals. Okay. Um. Looks like people went birding at Abbott's Lagoon. Ooh. Heck yeah. And that was in 65, so that was before we were here at the Palomar Field Station. So we, our um, banding site was closer to Abbott's Lagoon than it is now. We got Dowitcher, oh. Kilgoose. Yeah, it's a very um, Wild West sort of formatting here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Baltimore Oriole. <laughs> yeah. A whole page on the Baltimore Oriole. Nice. <laughs> Probably when they were discovering how they wanted their journals to be written. <laughs> we got a comment from Jennifer that says her Battle for Sexes game is still there. We played that this <laughs> summer. It was a very interesting game. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more birthdays? We can still do a day. Did we do either? Caroline or Oliver's birthday? Oh, yeah. Nope. Was your birthday Oliver? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the year? It's the year of the ox, I think. The year of the cow. The Chinese calendar. 97? Yeah. Our time is shy. Um, That's my birth year, too. Yeah. Are you an ox? Chrissy arrives, Elise arrives. Yeah, it's like a, it's a transition. Uh, yeah, I remember when you were in a transition period when we when it was your birthday. I remember like being out on grid with you and being like, oh wait, I don't know you very well, but I do know it's your birthday. What's on the other side? I caught a flicker. Nice. Nice. A Shisha. A red shafted flicker? And a sharp shinned hawk. An orange crab warbler. Just in fact, Jake being a sponsor. And they caught a Wiwa at Pine Gulf site. Oh, Wilson's warbler. Nice. And then Caroline, when's your birthday? Uh, 7 11, 1997. So, June. Here it is. Um. Happy birthday, Grant! Wow. Oh wow! And Caroline, <laughs> it's cool. I bet he likes saying his birthday too. Um, hmm. Slow day. New birds singing. Very few people around. So I like it. <laughs> um. Somehow we made it up the canyon in the dark for Grant's birthday. Built a beautiful sand castle and drank some wine. It's what birders do in their free time. <laughs> Fifteen birds that day. Um, let's see what kind of birds did. What's that? I don't know, but there's a McGillivray's warbler. Oh yeah. What's, What's Kobe? That? A common bush tit. Oh. And then we now just call bush tit. Hmm. Huh. Wilson's warbler. Pacific Slope Flycatcher. It's been a while since we've seen one of those. <laughs> What's summer bird? Birdless wasn't done due to beach activities. However, a ring-tailed northern area was quartering over... Ring-tailed <laughs> northern it, area? Does is, is that say ring-tail? It looked like it. And then it says northern area. Or hammer, I don't know, northern something. Must be hairier. Hmm. 
They were drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, I think that that is all that we have for now. Um, are there any last questions? Mm, I don't see any more questions. button mm. this show support us oh my gosh it goes support us here at the Tunnel Ranch Education if you enjoy this um, we do not have any other uh, Facebook live events scheduled at this time 